Happy New Year, everyone. It's Tanner with Architect, and I am so excited to bring this video to you guys, and I apologize that it's taken me so long. I have been so busy with uh, my architecture projects this last semester, with uh, the end of the semester wrapping up, and I've been trying to get to your guys' comments and trying to get back to you guys, and I know I've had a lot of questions and concerns about the new M1 Max. So in today's video, we are gonna discuss if you can use M1 Mac for architecture, or if you even should try. Let's take a look. All right, so if you're like me and you are either an architecture professional or student and you like using your Mac for architecture or wanna see if you can even use a Mac for architecture, then you are watching the right video. So I've gotten so many questions about if M1 Macs will work with Bootcamp, with Windows for architecture. And honestly, guys, right now it's not looking so good. So from the research I've done on the M1 Macs, Right now, they're saying that they are built to be able to handle Bootcamp and handle Windows 10 on the M1s. But right now, they're saying it's on Windows to make it compatible. So if you were to buy an M1 Mac right now, and you were to try to open up Bootcamp, because M1 Macs still have Bootcamp pre-installed. If you were to try opening up and technically installing it and getting it ready to work, it will say it's not compatible and doesn't work. So right now, Bootcamp does not work at all on the uh, M1 Max. So right there, we cannot partition the Mac to use Windows with the new M1s. So maybe you're thinking, well, Tanner, can I use uh, native programs, you know, AutoCAD or Renaissance 3 d or ArchiCAD, things that have a native version for Mac, maybe you're going, Tanner, can we just use those on the M1? And you might be able to. You might, uh, right now there's a lot of programs that don't work natively on the M1, but work natively on a Mac. So they have to go through a program called Rosetta, uh, where it helps it work on an M1 Mac. And so far people are saying that the Rosetta, um, that program is working well for having those those other softwares that aren't fully compatible work on the M1 Max, but I don't know if those programs will work, if they'll work fast enough or how well they will work um, as right now, just because I'm not a big enough channel to get M1 Max in to test out. If I was, I would love to do that and test them out for you guys and say what works and doesn't work. But right now, just not big enough yet. Hopefully someday soon where I can uh, bring in some different Macs, some different um, other like laptops uh, to do some comparisons and things like that. But anyway, there is one possible option that you could do Windows on M1 Mac here shortly. Um, you've heard me talk about before, if you watch my other videos, a program called Parallels Desktop. It's a virtual machine that allows you to run Windows within the Mac without having to reboot it. Uh, essentially, it's just like another desktop open on your screen. And it's full Windows, you can have Revit, you can have all sorts of programs on there that aren't native to a Mac on that. And you can run them and use them fairly well or really well, depending on which version of Parallels you have. The only issue I have is there's not many uh, rendering softwares that work in Parallels. Right now, they just made it so you can use Lumion within it, which is great. Um, you can't use Enscape. Um, I don't know about some of the other rendering softwares, but you can use Lumion. The only problem is if you're a student or you're a professional who doesn't want to spend a lot of money on using Parallels Desktop or a virtual machine, and you get the student version or the cheaper version, it throttles back your machine, so you cannot use 
Lumion to a full capacity where essentially it becomes pointless. I have the student version and I use the student version to do um, different concepts or different details that I'm doing uh, on a Revit program, but I don't do any of my renderings on here because it throttles it back. I have 32 gigs of RAM on this and it only allows me to use four gigs of RAM on that Parallels student version, which is a big bummer. It will allow you to use your laptop to its full capacity if you buy the most expensive Parallels. And what's too bad about it, it's not a one-time purchase. You have to pay monthly, or not monthly, but yearly. And it just gets really expensive. And so right now, Parallels doesn't have that version yet for the M1. They said they are in production of it. They are making it, but who knows how long that will take or if they'll be able to complete it and actually have it work or not. We don't know. Hey, what's up guys, it's Tanner here. Uh, so I was editing the video and um, I just found out today, um, it didn't happen just today, but I personally found out today that actually the um, Parallels version for the M1 Mac uh, to be able to run Windows on it has currently released. It isn't quite like ready for heavy programs such as Revit, designing programs, architecture programs, things like that. It's not quite ready for that yet, but it is available. Um, it's kind of, it seems like it's in a beta stage right now. Uh, quick correction for that. So back to the video. So my advice to you, if you're an architecture student looking at getting a new computer, wanting to get a Mac, or you're a professional out there saying, hey, I want to get a Mac for architecture, my recommendation is as of right now, they are still selling the 16 inch MacBook Pros with Intel uh, CPUs. My recommendation is to get those. Do not buy an M1 Mac for architecture as of right now. Uh, if you're really wanting an M1, but just plan on if you buy it, it's not gonna be used for architecture. You're gonna have to buy a Windows laptop to run your architecture programs on that. Uh, a lot of my classmates, they have a Mac for their daily use and they have a Windows for their architecture programs. For me, I wanted to have one to do it all, but I really wanted to have a Mac as well. So I have the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the 5500M graphics card with eight gigs of memory, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, the i9 eight core processor, and it works great. I've had some really, really big, pro or big projects that I've done on this Mac and it's handled it great. Uh, and I do all those within bootcamp. So, Another thing you can do, another thing I'd recommend is look for used MacBook Pros, uh, the 16 inch, 15 inch with the Vega 20 or bigger. So 15 inch had the Vega 20. And then when 16 inch came out, they had the 5500 series and then the 5600. Uh, my recommendation would get to get one of those. Do not get an M1 Mac as of right now. I know it's appealing. They're fast, they run cool, they're quiet and it's gonna be a great machine. Uh, just unfortunately, it's not gonna work for all the programs that us as designers need them for, uh, at least as of right now. And I wish I had one that I could test for you guys to, to let you know. And if I ever do, I will make a video and let you guys know how things work. But as of right now, I don't recommend it. I appreciate you guys hanging in there. I'm sorry it took me so long to make another video just been busy. I had to create a portfolio, start in or start uh, sending those off to get some internships. I could create a website portfolio and yeah, it was just busy. And also I've been working on another side project uh, with two of my classmates and buddies. We are doing a podcast slash YouTube channel as well um, about architecture, architecture in general, architecture school, what's life like being a student and kind of our uh, a walk through the years that we've had so far in architecture school and then through the projects that we've been doing. And once we get caught up to second semester of third year, which I'm in right now, it will be podcasts more about the day-to-day -day things that we're working on and going through. So if you guys want to check that out, feel free to check it out in the description below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for hanging in there. I hope to have some more content out soon. I already have some videos shot and ready to edit and put in for you guys. And for those of you who are using bootcamp or partition your drive and need some help on a few extra things. So have some things working there. 
And please, if you have any questions, keep commenting, keep asking those questions. I try to get back to them as soon as I can. And I'll keep working on that and try to get back to you guys as fast as I can um, and as accurately as I can. If there's things that I don't know, I might take a little longer, but it's because I'm doing some research to try to help find those answers for you guys. But keep watching. Thank you so much. It's happy 2021. Hopefully this year is a little bit better than last. I'm sure it will be. I'll talk to you guys later.